Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let's look at modules over polynomial rings. We've already looked at one example of modules over the ring of integers and there we showed it's just nothing but the set of abelian groups. Those are exactly the modules. Now uh, let's look at polynomial rings now. So what is a polynomial ring? What do we have in mind? Uh, so example, so let's take a field K and uh, so let k be a field and the ring that we will consider is the ring of polynomials in one variable x with coefficients in the field k. Okay. So of course you have you've seen this ring before, looked at various properties of it, ideals and so on and so forth. Now uh, let us try and understand what modules over this ring will look like. Okay. So let me give you examples of modules first. So let k uh, sorry, let V be a K vector space. So let it be a vector space over the field K. So that's the first piece of data I'll start with. And uh, I also need another piece of information, which is a linear transformation on V. Okay, let T from V to V be a linear operator or a linear transformation. Okay, recall linear operator from linear algebra is just a map from V to V which satisfies the following properties. If I take T of X plus Y, that's T X plus T Y. And if I multiply, if I sort of scalar multiply, then T of alpha X is just alpha T X. Okay, and this is now of course for all alpha coming from the field K, for all X's and Y's coming from the vector space V. Okay, so this is a linear operator. Now, if I take a vector space and a linear operator on that vector space, this data here can be used to define a module over the ring R. Okay, okay. how is that? Uh, so let's let's um, let me describe this construction. We can use this pair of information v comma t to define. Uh, an R module structure on well on the same space V in fact. Okay, I can make V into an R module or a left R module uh, as follows. So when I say R module usually without uh, uh, without qualifying it I usually always mean left R module. Okay, so when I say this I always mean left R module. And note we have already uh, said that left and right coincide if the ring is commutative which in this case is, is uh, it is in fact commutative here. Okay, we can use this to define an R module structure on V. So uh, let me describe the R module structure as follows. Okay. So uh, what do we need? to define an R module structure. Well, recall V is already an abelian group. So there is nothing further to do there. I already have an addition on V. What I need to define is really the scalar multiplication, right? So I need to tell you, need to define the scalar multiplication map Kx cross V to V, which satisfies those four axioms. Okay. So let's define it as follows. Uh, what are elements of Kx first? So I need to tell you what a typical element of Kx looks like. So let me let me take an element of Kx. So what's a element of Kx? It's a polynomial. So here's a typical element of Kx. So I need to define scalar multiplication by elements of the ring R. Okay. Now the scalars are not just elements of the field K alone. The scalars are actually polynomials in the variable x. Okay, so this guy is now a scalar really because I am allowing scalars to come from my ring R. 
okay so i should take this scalar and i should take some vector so okay let me not use x for vectors anymore um, so maybe even in the the previous going back here since i already have an x there so maybe it's safer to uh, you know call this variable x as something else so that there is no confusion with the other x so let me just say let's use v1 and v2 here for my vectors so let me say t of v1 plus v2 is t v1 plus t v2 t of alpha v is alpha t of v okay and this is for all v v v1 v2 in my vector space v okay that was just uh, the definition of the linear transformation so now I, I let me come back to my main object which is to try and define a scalar multiplication so take this polynomial which is a element of my ring r I should tell you how to scalar multiply it with uh, a vector v right now uh, the definition as, is as follows we we just try to do the most most intuitive thing so let's define it as so let, let, let me look at the constant term alpha naught is a constant term of the polynomial the constant term remember is an element of k okay all the coefficients in fact are elements of k so I will take this this element alpha naught of k and after all v is a k vector space right I already know how to do scalar multiplication there so v is a vector in my vector space alpha naught is a scalar from k so I already know how to multiply elements of k with elements of v so this is just the usual scalar multiplication in my vector space v uh, multiplication by scalars coming from k by scalars in k so this is already given right I know that v I, I started with the uh, k vector space v so this alpha naught v is just the usual scalar multiplication of v with alpha naught now the trouble comes in the next term I have alpha 1 x right now I need to somehow figure out a way of defining how this element acts on V now if I have just alpha 1 of course alpha 1 into V is just the usual scalar multiplication but I do not know what to do with the x here okay so that is really what this additional linear operator T is useful for so here is our definition the second term alpha 1 x we make it act on v as follows uh, x sort of acts like the operator t ok so t v now is again some vector in v alpha 1 is a scalar in k so scalar in k times vector in v I know how to do it because that is the scalar multiplication in the vector space v ok plus let us look at the next term uh, x square right this is now going to look like alpha 2 x square so I will define it as, a, as follows this is just t square acting on v ok now what is t square so recall t square is just shorthand notation for t composed with t in other words t square v is just the vector t acting on t v ok plus dot 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 alpha n this is now t power n acting on v again t power n just means the repeated composition of t n times ok so this is my definition I make my definition in this manner so I say that my scalar this polynomial alpha naught plus alpha 1 plus blah 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 acting on v gives me this answer alpha naught v plus alpha 1 t v plus alpha 2 t square v and so on ok now uh, we have to check that this satisfies all the axioms ok once we check that then of course it is a well defined module so let us check the axioms that is our task now so let us check the axioms ok so what is the first axiom say it says that uh, if I take a scalar so in my case my scalar is some polynomial in x so I will just call it p of x for now times v1 plus v2 that should give me this polynomial acting on v1 plus this polynomial acting on v2 ok where so p of x I am just using as so this is my polynomial alpha naught plus alpha on x plus dot 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 ok and of course all the elements come from the appropriate spaces v1 and v2 come from v the alphas are all elements of k ok so I have to check if this is true so is this true is the question right 
according to my definition. Just a question of, of uh, writing out both sides. So, observe that uh, so the formula that I that I wrote out. So, what is the left hand side therefore, this is just going to be alpha naught plus okay. So, let me write it as this alpha naught uh, times v 1 plus v 2 plus alpha 1 t acting on v 1 plus v 2 plus alpha 2 t square acting on v 1 plus v 2 and so on okay, till I reach the nth term. But the key observation here is that each of these terms as actually splits into two pieces. Okay, so, t of v 1 plus v 2 remember t was a linear operator. So, I can write it as t v 1 plus t v 2. If t is a linear operator, t composition t is also a linear operator. So, t square is linear. So, t square of v 1 plus v 2 will again split into two pieces. So, alpha naught multiplied by v 1 plus v 2 is alpha naught v 1 plus alpha naught v 2 because you have distributivity in the uh, vector space v. So, I, I sort of split this into two pieces. I just write all the v 1s first t v 1 plus alpha 2 t square v 1 etcetera etcetera and then below it I write all the v 2 terms alpha naught v 2 plus alpha 1 t v 2 plus alpha 2 t square v 2 and so on okay, and observe that is exactly the right hand side okay, where you have to sort of do it in two separate steps. Okay, so, that is the, the first axiom. Now, um, you know the second axiom is sort of similar it is in fact even easier the second axiom just uses the fact that this is linear. So, I will just leave the second axiom for you to check as an exercise. The third axiom which is that if I multiply two scalars okay, in other words I take two polynomials p of x and q of x and I multiply them in my ring r and then act on a vector v then the answer should be the same as the answer I get when I first take p x act it on the answer that I get when I act q x on v. Okay. So, this is what I need to check again I need to see if this, this statement is true for my third axiom. And again let us write both sides out. So, what is p into q? So, now this involves multiplication in my ring of polynomials. So, remember alpha 1 x plus alpha 2 x square blah 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 till, till some finite point q x looks like beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x square and so on. Now, their product p x times q x is computed as follows right. So, what is the constant term? It is alpha naught beta naught the coefficient of x is alpha naught beta 1 plus alpha 1 beta naught and so on. So, you sort of know what, what to do beta 2 alpha 1 beta 1 alpha 2 beta naught x square and so on right. So, this is how we compute the product of, of p and q and so now when we act the product p q on a vector v what does it give us? Well, we just have to do the following uh, wherever you see so, each of these numbers, so I write alpha naught beta naught uh, multiply it by the scalar v uh, sorry the scalar alpha naught beta naught times v plus the scalar alpha naught beta 1 plus alpha naught alpha 1 beta naught times. So, remember this term x means I should replace it with t v the next term with t square v and so on. So, that is my um, that is how p x q x acts. Now, let us compute the right hand side which is p x acting on q x acting on v. So, what does that mean? I first have to figure out what q x acting on v is what this vector is. Well, this vector by definition is beta naught v plus t v and so on. So, it is just a question of writing this out etcetera. And now, I try to act p x on this this vector q x v right. So, how does how does uh, p x act on this vector? Well, it is alpha naught times um, this whole vector. So, I plug this whole vector in here okay, plus alpha let us write that down here alpha 1 t acting on well that same vector this vector plus alpha 2 t square acting on the very same vector and so on right dot dot dot. So, that is my uh, right hand side p x acting on q x of v 
is just alpha naught of this whole thing plus alpha 1 t acting on that whole thing plus alpha 2 t square acting on that whole thing and so on. Okay. Now, we, we can sort of, uh, so let us take one representative term and see what is going on and that will sort of tell us what to do in general. So, now observe uh, for example, if I take a typical term, so what does a typical term look like? So, typical term in this in this summation looks like, so let me take the kth term, it looks like alpha k t power k acting on that vector in, in the inside which is beta 1, beta naught plus beta 1 t v plus beta 2 t square v and so on. Now, when I act at t power k on a combination of vectors which each of which is you know uh, t v, t square v, t cube v and so on, I just have to observe make the following observation that uh, write this here t power k on some vector which looks like t power j acting on v, it is like I have already composed t with itself j times and I further need to compose it with itself k times. So, it is t to the k plus j acting on v. So, this is the this is the key observation here that t to the k acting on t to the j v is t to the k plus j v. Okay. So, this guy here will just become alpha k beta naught t to the k v plus alpha k beta 1 t to the k plus 1 v and so on. Okay. So, that will become the whole expansion. Okay. Now, that is I have just written out the general term there. Now, you can sort of see what, what goes on if you just go back and, and plug it in, you will observe the following that P x acting on Q x acting on V is in fact nothing but the sum over all k is alpha k. Uh, so, let us it is a double sum now k runs over all the possibilities k 0 to whatever the degree of p is whatever the top limit is uh, beta j, j again runs from 0 to the degree of q. So, let me say to the degree of p, this runs to the degree of the polynomial q alpha k beta j and what do I get here t to the k plus j acting on p. Okay. So, I have just said the typical term, the kth term, I have sort of shown you what it looks like, it looks like this. But then to do the entire sum, I need to also allow k to vary from 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, I am just doing the whole whole thing in one go. So, that is my answer. Okay. But observe that is exactly what we got when we took the product of alpha uh, of p and q. So, observe what is this, this answer here p x q x on v. The typical term here is exactly alpha k beta j and the power of t in front is, is uh, k plus j. Okay. So, observe this is nothing but uh, you know this looks like the sum alpha let us say alpha i beta j. Uh, I, so, what does a typical term look like? This is this is the coefficient. So, so I should say p x uh, So, let us write this out also as a summation. So, this looks like uh, if I want to know what is the coefficient of some t to the uh, let us call this k maybe k j. If I want to know what is the coefficient of t to the i v, then this is the sum over all k and j such that k plus j equals i. Okay, and this is now a sum i going from 0 to whatever the degree of p q is. Okay. Now, uh, so I will just leave it for you to nail down the final details. So, observe this final term here that I have which I get when I take the product is actually the same as the term I get here. Okay. So, those two answers are actually the same. So, this is the same as the left hand side that I obtained earlier. Okay. So, that was slightly lengthy, but uh, completely elementary, it is just from the definition itself. And let me check the final axiom, axiom 4, which says that if I take the identity element of my ring and I scalar multiply it with any vector, I should get back that vector. But observe the identity element of the ring here is nothing but 
well what is the identity element it's just this polynomial right i should think of it as this polynomial one is the constant term plus 0x plus 0x square and so on acting on v and that by definition is just uh, one acting on v this is the usual scalar multiplication and then the rest of the terms don't contribute because i get zeros in front okay so this is now just the usual scalar multiplication so this one is in k this is an element of v and this is a scalar multiplication in the vector space v and there of course we know the answer is v okay this is by the axioms of the vector space so what i get is that 1 dot v is exactly v by the fact that v is a vector space over k okay so what have we uh, managed to do we have managed to show that all the the four axioms hold in this case okay so uh, we have therefore shown the following so conclusion is the following if i give you a pair of a vector space over k together with a linear operator on that vector space okay v is a vector space over a field k and t is a linear operator on that vector space then this pair gives me the structure this allows me to define defines a kx module structure on my uh, vector space v okay and in fact the converse is also true that if i am given a, a kx module then from that i can uh, extract a vector space and a linear operator okay so let me quickly tell you what the converse is so uh, suppose i am given a kx module conversely if v is a kx module maybe we will call it m let us call this m suppose m is a kx module then from this m I can extract a vector space and a linear operator um, as follows if m is a, vector, is a kx module observe that uh, the constants so uh, I can define a vector space as follows so let us define define a vector space v as follows I will take v to just be the the set m itself with scalar multiplication as follows with scalar multiplication by elements of k right I have to make it a k vector space uh, I can I can do this so if m is a kx module we can obtain uh, such a pair v comma t as follows so that is what I am trying to do construct a vector space and a linear operator on it uh, the vector space is just the same as the space m itself but now I want to think of it uh, I need to tell you how to do scalar multiplication by elements of k well you just say the following say I want to take an element v in m and I want to um, figure out how to scalar multiply it with a scalar coming from k right how should we define this is the question and the answer is well uh, a scalar is just a constant polynomial right I can think of the scalar for example as just this you know think of it as constant is alpha constant term is alpha and all the other coefficients are zeros so a scalar is a particular example of a, uh, a polynomial just a constant polynomial so take that constant polynomial and you act on b okay and what do you mean by act on b I am after all given that m is a kx module right so I am given an action of kx on m in particular I am given an action of all the constant polynomials so that is all I am saying define the action of the scalar alpha on v as just the action of the constant polynomial alpha on v okay so that is my definition and my linear operator t from v to v is obtained as follows define the linear operator t by saying t acting on v is just the action of x on v okay so x remember is again a polynomial it's a very special polynomial the degree one homogeneous polynomial x power one i just look at how x acts on v 
Okay, that again is given because V is after all uh, given to be a kx module, uh, m is given to be a kx module. So, I just use the, the given action. So, Tv is defined like this xv. Okay, so, this is for all v and v. So, x is my, my special polynomial here. Okay, so, given a kx module, I can get these two pieces of information. One, I can define a vector space over k, which is the same underlying set m, but in which the scalar multiplication is just the same as the action by the constant polynomials. And I can get a linear operator from this action t, uh, I can get a linear operator t from this action as follows. I just take the action of the special polynomial x on this, this module. Okay? And what you now have to check, which I leave as an exercise. So, exercise check that v is in fact a k vector space and t is in fact a linear operator. And moreover, the action of any polynomial p x, uh, p x is sort of given by the same uh, same prescription as before. Is given as before, meaning this polynomial p x acting on v will just be alpha naught v plus alpha 1 t v plus alpha n t power n v. Okay. In other words, if you started with this pair, so, so on the one hand I, I took m and from m I have constructed a pair v comma t. Right? Now, we have already described a way of, of starting with a pair v t and constructing a module from it. Now, what we are saying is that these two are really inverse processes of each other. Okay? If I am already given a module to start with, I extract the v and the t from it. Now, having gotten this pair, I can construct a module out of that by our previous formula. But doing that just gives me back the same module n. Okay? So, again, this is like uh, uh, our previous principle that abelian groups and z modules are the same thing. Similarly, here the principle, the, the final conclusion is the following slightly loosely stated fact that kx modules are the same uh, as pairs v comma t okay and where v is a k vector space and t is a linear operator on k okay so these two things are the same so of course the study on the right hand side is of a linear operator on a vector space is really the, 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 the key thing one does in linear algebra. right? So, this is really this belongs in linear algebra and in some sense many theorems from, from linear algebra can be fruitfully obtained or studied from the point of view of modules. Okay? If you study modules over rings, in particular module over the ring kx, what you actually get as a corollary is some you know nice facts about linear operators acting on vector spaces okay